Hello and welcome. Today, I'd like to speak about how journaling is good for your mental health. And more specifically, I'd like to share some of my techniques that I use to silence my inner critic and to turn off that inner monologue of negative thoughts. It's helped me quite a bit, and now I'd like to share it with you. Some of us shelter a monster. It feeds off our thoughts, robs us of our energy, and threatens our connections with others and the soundness of our minds and our composure. I'm afraid to say this one terrible truth. You cannot wish it away. You cannot pray it into silence. You cannot reason it into shadow or rationalize your way to happiness. You can only confront it. Seek out its boundaries, its roots, its underlying causes. Describe it. Pin it down to that place where it lives within you and rob it of its power. Journaling can help this. It is a guidebook to your inner topography. Perhaps it can also function as a psychological bestiary. Of all the inner voices that plague you, the symphony of self-doubt, the nagging pull of negativity, and the overwhelming weighted bite of depression and sorrow. Through journaling, you can explore within yourself why you have invited this presence in, animated it, and set it upon your psyche as some sort of vengeful beast by describing in detail how these voices make you feel and what ideas or memories are connected to them. You have not concocted these beasts at random. A chaotic childhood, the fear of harm, of death, the betrayals of those who were supposed to love and protect you, leave you thinking that this is the natural way. And when times are quiet, or when you meet someone well-balanced and at peace with themselves, you may then self-sabotage with the beast. You need that chaotic energy, that stimulation. These are the sort of patterns that you need to extricate yourself from. And first, you must recognize them by journaling about them. So how can journaling rob this monster of its power? First, and the only way you can accomplish anything when working on yourself, is to be completely honest. You cannot censor yourself. If this requires a journal with a lock, then so be it. Get a journal with a lock. You must feel safe enough to express your unmitigated thoughts in all of their brutal starkness and specificity. This will help you see their extent. Then you can wrestle them in and you can begin to turn these voices around as a source of strength. But that, my friend, takes time. Now, you may be asking, what is the best way to begin? Well, I suggest starting with something I call the challenge of the blank page. The empty space of a blank page in your journal mocks you. It can criticize you by saying that neither your thoughts nor your handwriting are worthy enough to fill that beautiful blankness. This is nonsense and only comes from within you. This is the wall of self-doubt expressed in critical voices within. So how do you transcend these? My technique to do just that is to simply write, touch that nib upon the page and write. Spoil the immaculate whiteness 
This is a courageous act. This is the first step toward turning your entire life around. You are embarking on a hero's journey. You are confronting the enemy, the dragon, within. And that is the toughest fight of all. Your inner voices will whine and complain. They will tell you that you have nothing to say, that self-improvement takes too long, that you are too sick, too old, too set in your ways, whatever negative reason they can throw at you at the moment. These voices are you, so they know exactly what to say to rob you of your power, your motivation and you know how to silence them. Use this technique. Simply ask yourself, is it true? Is your self-doubt giving you accurate information about yourself or is it simply hindering you? Always question, always evaluate, allow your rational mind to take over and evaluate that inner monologue and question whether or not its voice is valid. What we are doing here is learning to differentiate between your conscience and your inner critic. Meanwhile, your nib is there on the paper. Forget the voices for a moment. Write the date at the top of the page. That looks nice. Now something about the day. A few brief sentences about your day. This is vital. It gives your thoughts a timeline, a foundation in the mud of your inner geography. You are building. You are setting stones as you rise toward a more composed, purposeful self. You want to be able to measure progress. So you need to know where you are. So what's next? Well, this is what I've done. Write anything, but make sure that it is true and then simply go as deeply into your feelings as you can transcribe. You are trying to get to the essence of who you are. And this is one way you can do it. Ask yourself a very big question. Who am I today? And how do I feel? Don't worry if you repeat yourself. Don't dwell on the negative aspects of your life or your progress. Note them, but realize that their relevance passes in an instant and that it's all better to just simply let them go. Instead, look for opportunities to shore up your confidence. Analyze those moments that you handled stress well. You handled your adversaries. Highlight how you did that and how you could do it better in the future. Dwell on how you interact with people to make those interactions easier and more effective. From this, I personally learned how to add a pause in the proceedings of my life to consider what was said before I reacted to it or what happened, and what it means to sort it all out and then react so that I have much more productive interactions and that I am not responding to conflict with impulse. I have also learned the goal of problem solving. Conflict resolution is not to win. There are no winners in conflict. The goal is to restore and enhance harmony, to make your connection stronger with those around you, and to help lift them up further so that they can achieve their hopes and dreams. Another important technique that I use is a way of making sure that I don't have cognitive dissonance that I'm not acting in a way that betrays my core values. So how do I do that? 
I do it by analyzing my life constantly, by questioning whether my long-held beliefs are still serving their purposes. Are they helping me to be closer to those around me or dividing me from them? Any belief that seeks to isolate you and cut you off from the stream of discourse and human interaction is not serving you well. I believe the goal of life is to develop your character and to make connections with other people. Loneliness may well be the most powerful monster of all. This is why describing those negative voices in your mind, deconstructing them, sapping them of their strength and relevance goes far in keeping you healthy and well balanced. You are the curator of your mind, selecting what goes in and which internal voices to listen to. Journaling can help you do this by charting your thoughts over time and seeing if your new paradigms of thinking are leading you toward more powerful and healthy results. And if you need inspiration, if you need some motivation along the way, I will be here with my humble videos longing to inspire you to keep you writing and improving yourself. There will always be another video coming further up the road. So what do you think? Have you been helped by the power of journaling? Let me know in the comments. Life can be tough. We all need to band together to get through it. So thank you so much for watching. If you've reached this point, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you along on this journey with us. Also, if you want to get more involved and support the channel, consider membership. We have a lot of fun behind the scenes and I'd love to get to know you better. So I release new videos each week and I have a live show every Tuesday night at eight. So I promise we will see each other again very soon further up the road. So take care.